Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today is the 60th anniversary of the Atlas rocket. Now, the Atlas rocket had its first test launch on June 11th, 1957. It was being developed at the time as a ballistic missile. It was, in fact, the first ICBM deployed by the United States, Although being based on kerosene and liquid oxygen fuel, it was not well suited as a weapon system. The other signature features of the Atlas rocket were the stainless steel balloon tanks that were required to be pressurized to support their own weight. There were the diagonally attached vernier motors that you see during launch. And there is, of course, the three engines that operated in a stage and a half system. That is, initially you would launch with all three engines lit and then partway through flight, about two and a half minutes in typically, two of the engines would drop off. This was because in 1957 they hadn't quite figured out whether they could light an engine in flight. So the first launch of any Atlas vehicle was on June 11th, 1957 and unfortunately it ended in a failure. Apparently during the launch, some of the exhaust gases were being ducted back inside the rear of the rocket and it burned through some wiring, causing a failure of the vehicle. After a second failure in September, they finally succeeded in launching an Atlas in December of 1957. This early successful launch was an Atlas A prototype. It only had two engines instead of the three. The Atlas B, that introduced the third sustainer engine in the middle, and it began launching in July of 1958. It was also the first to use the engine staging technique, although it was still using early development engines, which only generated about 1.2 meganewtons. And in December 1958, the Atlas B was used to launch the first communication satellite. Well, it's not a communication satellite as we know it, it was a the SCORE satellite, was able to record messages onto a tape and then retransmit it via shortwave. This was used to distribute a Christmas message from President Eisenhower all around the world. Missile development continued. The Atlas C had adjusted tank sizes to support the new engines, and Atlas D, the first deployed version, had a new improved engine system which generated 1.6 meganewtons of thrust. The Atlas D became also the basis for many of the space launch vehicles. One of the first conversions was Atlas Able, essentially putting the Vanguard second stage on top of an Atlas rocket. This, however, was not a success, with every single vehicle being a failure. Some during launch due to aerodynamic issues, others simply exploding on the ground. The next iteration, Atlas Agena, was however a lot more successful. This placed a liquid-fueled Agena stage on top, which uses um, hypergolic fuels, and this became a hugely reliable launch vehicle. Indeed, the Agena is the most used upper stage by US rockets. The Agena was more than just an upper stage, it was a complete satellite bus designed to support the payload with propulsion, power, stabilization and communications. The configuration was used to launch spacecraft for the Mariner and Ranger programs, as well as military programs like uh, Midas and the Missile Defense Alarm System. In parallel with the development of the Atlas as a satellite launcher, the Mercury program required a human-rated version of the launcher. The first launch of an Atlas as part of the Mercury program actually took place before the uh, Atlas Able or Atlas Agena. In 1959, they launched a suborbital Big Joe test. This was designed to test a boilerplate capsule with a heat shield to make sure that the heat shield would actually work. It wasn't an entirely successful launch with the engines not operating correctly and the capsule having, having a lot of trouble separating from the spacecraft. However, the capsule did separate after exhausting its supply of RCS fuel and demonstrated not only that the heat shield worked, but that the Mercury capsule design was aerodynamically stable. The spacecraft landed about 500 miles short and was recovered hours after landing, and it was considered a success by the Mercury team, although the booster team considered it a serious failure, and there would be many more failures in the development of the Atlas for human-rated flight. But eventually, in 1962, an Atlas rocket launched John Glenn into orbit around the Earth. And then it would do it three more times, for a total of four crewed flights on Atlas rockets. 
However, after the end of the Mercury program, human spaceflight moved on to Gemini and Apollo and never used the Atlas launcher again to put people in space. But the rocket itself continued to be developed as a satellite launcher. In 1962, an Atlas rocket launched the first Centaur upper stage, um, an efficient liquid hydrogen fueled stage able to give much more kick than the Agena. The first launch in May of 1962 was a failure, but the second in November of 1963 became the first use of a hydrogen rocket engine in space. This configuration became known as Atlas Centaur, and in 1966 an Atlas Centaur rocket boosted Surveyor 1 towards the moon, and it became NASA's first spacecraft to soft land on any extraterrestrial body. 1966 also saw the Atlas boosting Agena target vehicles as rendezvous and docking targets for the Gemini program. In 1965, Atlas was decommissioned as a weapon system. While it had been deployed, they had also developed E and F variants of the booster, but all the rockets that had been deployed were now uh, refurbished and began getting used to launch satellites primarily launching out of Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, while the purpose-built Atlas still launched from Cape Canaveral. The refurbished Atlas missiles would actually continue to be used for launches right up until 1995. But coming back to the 1960s, the Atlas launch vehicle continued to be iterated upon. Both the Atlas Agena and the Atlas Centaur gained stretched tank versions towards the end of the 60s. 1978 would see the last launch of an Atlas Agena rocket, but Atlas Centaur continued to fly. Although many people imagined that these expendable rockets might be headed for extinction as the first launch of the space shuttle loomed. But Atlas development continued and in 1983 the Atlas G and Atlas H were introduced. These had uprated engines now generating 1.9 mega newtons of thrust that supported an even longer first stage. The G variant would add a Centaur upper stage, and it would be used to launch five communication satellites during the 80s. After the Challenger disaster, it was clear expendable vehicles would still be needed, and development was again continued. The next iteration would logically be the Atlas I, but given that I is Roman numeral for one, they decided to change the naming scheme, and it became the Atlas I. Atlas One started using a more powerful RS-27 sustainer engine. It first flew in 1990 and it was the last Atlas to use the distinctive Vernier control engines. Atlas II appeared in 1991 and it replaced all three engines with the RS-56, providing a combined launch thrust of almost 2.5 meganewtons. And in 1993, the Atlas II AS debuted. It added the option of four Castor solid rocket motors to increase performance. In total, there would be 63 Atlas II launches between 1991 and 2004, and every single one of them was a success, an enviable record. The Atlas II was also notable as the last in the line to use the stage and a half staging technique. Atlas III was originally called Atlas II AR. R because it switched to the Russian RD-180 engine, which offered better performance than any US built engine of the time. A 3B variant offered improved performance still by using a stretched Centaur upper stage using two RL-10 engines instead of the one. However, only six launches were made before the current Atlas V was developed. The big change with the Atlas V design was adding a rigid fuel tank in place of the old balloon style tanks. It also supports up to five AJ-60 rocket motors on the side, and theoretically a two-engine Centaur upper stage is also supported. This gives the Atlas V a lot of flexibility in terms of launch payloads, able to put somewhere between 10 and 19 tons into orbit depending upon the configuration. ULA has also listed a, an Atlas V heavy version which uses three of the common core boosters. However, this has never been flown. Now, some of you have been wondering why there's no Atlas IV, and honestly, I don't know. Some have suggested that there was a secret military variant which has uh, so far remained classified. Others suggested that having the number four would confuse it with Delta IV and Titan IV. 
and of course make it seem one less than Ariane 5, and others have suggested that the word for four in Japanese is uh, confused with death. Anyway, the builder and operator of the Atlas, the ULA, are now looking to the future and the next iteration will be called Vulcan, so the Atlas name may disappear. It will replace those politically sensitive RD-180 engines with a Blue Origins BE-4 engine, which burns liquid methane and liquid oxygen. The Centaur upper stage would be replaced by something called the Advanced Cryogenics Evolved Stage, and it brings a whole host of new technology to the program. But today, Atlas still flies, and it is still one of the most reliable launch vehicles out there. So yeah, happy birthday, Atlas, and may you continue to fly safe.